Ever wondered what the ancient Greeks thought about the deed? Well, strap in for a fascinating journey back in time. Ancient Greece, a cradle of Western civilization, had a distinctive take on sexuality and sensuality, quite different from our modern perceptions. Their beliefs and practices governed by a unique set of rules and norms may even shock us today. From gods and goddesses to everyday citizens, their views on the deed were embedded in every facet of life. So, are you ready to delve into the naughty side of ancient Greece? Our journey begins with the birth of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, beauty, pleasure, and procreation. Emerging from the sea's foam, Aphrodite was the embodiment of sexual desire and pleasure, a symbol that resonates through Greek mythology. This was a world where the divine and the carnal intertwined, where gods and goddesses pursued their passions with abandon. Zeus, the king of the gods, was infamous for his numerous affairs, fathering countless children with both goddesses and mortal women. Apollo, the god of the sun, had his share of lovers too, while even Hera, Zeus's wife and queen of Olympus, had her own dalliances. The god's exploits weren't limited to the opposite sex either. Poseidon, the sea god, had male lovers, and Aphrodite herself was not immune to the charms of her fellow goddesses. These divine escapades set a precedent for the mortals they ruled over, shaping societal attitudes toward sexuality. Clearly, the gods set quite the example for their mortal followers. Moving on from the gods, let's turn our attention to the mortals of ancient Greece. Here, sexuality was woven into the very fabric of society, playing out in ways that might astonish us today. First, let's talk about pederasty, a socially acknowledged practice where an adult male would take an adolescent boy under his wing to educate him and yes, engage in naughty activities. This was seen as a rite of passage for the younger man and a societal norm rather than a taboo. Then, there was prostitution which, unlike in many societies today, was not shamed but accepted. Both men and women could be prostitutes, often attending symposiums, social gatherings where the Greeks would discuss philosophy, politics, and yes, engage in naughty activities. Speaking of symposiums, these gatherings were also crucial in shaping societal norms around sex, often featuring erotic performances and discussions. As for women's sexuality, it was a complex issue. On one hand, wives were expected to be modest and virtuous, on the other, there were the hetera, educated and independent women who were companions to men, not just sexually but also intellectually. They were considered a cut above ordinary prostitutes because they could engage in witty banter and intellectual discussions. The ancient Greeks certainly had a unique take on love and lust. The deed wasn't just a part of life in ancient Greece, it was also a part of their art and literature. The Greeks were unabashed in their depiction of sexuality, with explicit sexual imagery often gracing their vase paintings. These scenes were not hidden or shamed, but proudly displayed. Greek literature also brimmed with sensuality. Revered poets like Sappho pushed the boundaries of expression, exploring female sexuality with an openness that was rare for the time. Her lyrical verses, filled with desire and longing, gave a voice to women's passions and experiences. Even the ancient Greek plays with their bawdy humor and suggestive dialogues, reflected a society that acknowledged and embraced the complexity of human sexuality. This liberal approach to sexuality was a testament to the ancient Greeks' belief in the beauty of the human form and the naturalness of sexual desire. Through their art and literature, the ancient Greeks left a lasting legacy of their unique views on sexuality. As we reach the end of our journey, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. We've delved into the risque side of ancient Greece, starting with the birth of Aphrodite, the goddess of love, beauty, and yes, sexuality. We learned how the Greek gods weren't exactly shy about their sexual exploits, showcasing an array of relationships that would make even the boldest of us blush. We then moved on to society's norms, where we discovered that sexuality wasn't a hidden or shameful topic, it was an integral part of life, discussed openly and often, with important implications for societal roles and status. In the realm of art and literature we saw that the Greeks weren't hesitant to showcase their intimate affairs. From pottery to poetry, the Greeks used every medium available to express their sexual experiences and ideas. So, next time you think of ancient Greece, remember, it wasn't all philosophy and democracy. There was a fair bit of naughtiness too.